Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. So, uh, Peter, it was quite an interesting uh, event uh, yesterday. I, interesting is, I think, uh, too kind of word for it. There was a bizarre event that took place in New York City yesterday. Uh, President Biden was attending a fundraiser. Um, so he had some wealthy listeners at this fundraiser. Um, and he said to his um, uh, wealthy uh, donors that we are closer to uh, nuclear Armageddon than at any time since the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. And then he said, um, you know, I, I know Putin uh, fairly well. And when he says that uh, he intends to use uh, tactical nuclear or chemical or biological weapons, He's not joking. Um, now, you know, leave aside that Putin didn't say he was going to use uh, tactical, nuclear, chemical, or biological uh, weapons. It's kind of a remarkable that um, Biden is somehow posing as some sort of a pundit on CNN, you know, as a warning about the dangers of uh, nuclear Armageddon when. You know, you know, if we look at uh, recent history, just a recent history of in the past 12 months, anybody could have predicted that if the US uh, continues down this path, uh, we will indeed be in danger of triggering uh, nuclear Armageddon. Um, and he, he seems completely oblivious to that. I mean, we, you know, we, we can talk about uh, the various uh, commitments that were made last year. You remember when, um, uh, Lloyd Austin went to Ukraine and said the road to NATO is open. You know, we can talk about um, uh, the NATO, the US uh, Ukraine strategic partnership that was signed uh, in November of last year. We can talk about, you know, uh, the, the speeches, the right, you know, Putin delivered any number of speeches in the fall of 2021 in which he, he said the West is crossing our red lines. The West isn't listening to us. Um, and then we have the, the December um, ultimatums, or whatever you want to call them, the, uh, when Putin issued for a new European security architecture, the Americans dismissed it. And so we, we have all of these events. And then, and then of course, you know, when you know, the, the, the special military operation started, the US just poured in, you know, all of the weaponry it had, weaponry that was obviously used to kill Russians. Russian, Americans are directly involved in killing Russians. They're providing tactical intelligence, targeting and everything. Um, and then Biden said, whoa, whoa, whoa geez, we, we, you know, we're close to um, nuclear Armageddon. I, I find this just a quite, quite bizarre, but I mean, he's such a bizarre character and such a bizarre presidency that it's almost par for the course. Well, my take on this is this is a form of projection. Um, um, saying the Russians are threatening. No, the Russians have not said it. Look at through all of the speeches. It's not there. As close as it may get there, we have a variety, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, a, a, a wide array of, of sophisticated weapons. Those weapons weren't mentioned, okay? Later, uh, former President Dmitry Medvedev, uh, he's very active on Telegram uh, in Russian now, and um, he's clarified this. He's, he's, we did, need to do a separate video on what Medvedev is doing doing all this, because I think it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure it's convincing, but it's interesting. Um, it's the West that is talking about this. It was Zelensky that was talking about this. Now, I personally look at it this way, is that the, the military, Ukraine's military prospects are about zero in the long run, okay, in the long run, um, uh, even in the medium term. Um, and there's, and all, all of the, the fancy talk, because it's all it is is fancy talk and propaganda, NATO really isn't much of a military alliance. It's a conduit for the US and, and some British and, 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 and uh, um, uh, French assets to um, legitimize their the destruction of Yugoslavia, okay. Um, but as a military alliance, it has a long way to go to be something that's unified and can fight a conventional war. They don't have the capacity to do that. And this has always been the dilemma because why did, why did the Soviet Union and the United States have these weapons during the Cold War? Because, well, you know, 
if push comes to shove, nobody wants to go there. So, you know, we, we, you actually want to avoid a conventional war because you have these security pillars, you know, this is our umbrella, right? Well, no, if you've changed the thinking is that, no, we actually can use, uh, have a, mili a conventional war, but you don't have the capacity to do it. And then you say, but we can't lose. See, this is, this is why this is a dilemma and it's really terrifying because neither side uh, as perceives that they can afford to lose, okay? And the West cannot win military. I mean, how, how, what is it? It's $80 billion now worth of, uh, of arms and stuff like that. It's, it's not gonna turn the corner, okay? It's not gonna turn the corner. And so what do you have left in your arsenal? So I see it as a form of projection, you know, they might use it. I think that's the West that are thinking, how can we use it and get away with it without causing Armageddon? Okay, and George and I famously have talked about false flags, you know, have some kind of nuclear explosion. Uh, oh, the, see, the Russians used it, okay? We're being prepped for this. Look, everybody, this is not crazy talk. Somebody destroyed the North Stream pipelines, okay? And it wasn't Russia. Right, right. No, I, I think that's, that's really the danger. And it's been the danger for um, some time uh, that, um, the, the, the West will uh, will cause some sort of a, whether it's use of nuclear weapons or chemical weapons or biological weapons, and then they can turn around and uh, and, and accuse uh, Russia. So in other words, it will be, as, as you said, uh, a false flag. Um, and then, you know, yesterday Zelensky talked about um, that NATO should launch a preemptive attack on, uh, on Russia. So it's, it's rather than wait for Russia to uh, launch a nuclear attack, it's, I mean, I think that what's uh, striking about all of this is that um, the West has continued um, provoking uh, Russia over and over again and trying to push um, the, the line further and further. It's like, well, we, we've done this, we've got away with it. Let's, let's take it a little further. And, then, and they keep doing this. Um, and then they turn around and then Essentially, say, oh right, well, look what happens. You know, Ru you know, Russia is uh, uh, threatening to use uh, nuclear weapons, um, and thus they present themselves as somehow innocent party. You know, the victims of uh, aggression. It's the it's the nonsense that uh, Stoltenberg regularly uh, purveys when he talks about somehow. Well, we're we're defending uh, Ukraine, but we're not a party to this war. Um, so, in other words, it's like, so therefore, if Russia does indeed attack us, then, oh, well, this is an unprovoked attack. So it's, it's a part of this, this constant, you know, disingenuous lying that uh, NATO engages in. It's constantly provoking. It's constantly uh, pushing the line um, and presenting itself as the, the innocent uh, victim in all of this. Well, with, you know, we've over the last few days, I've taught, used the term the Overton window. And, we, we, and, and the reference that I was making is that debate <laughs> has gotten narrower. But the Overton window is fully operational in a different sense, talking about the use of nuclear weapons. That's insane, everybody. But no, it's in like fundraiser. Oh, you know, we, you know, we have to, you know, Putin could do this, but, you know, nuclear weapons. It, it, it's normalizing insanity. Okay, this is what it's doing. Look, folks, Russia's nuclear doctrine is very, very simple and has not been changed. And it's been talked about publicly, as I just mentioned, uh, Dmitry Medvedev. Russia will use these weapons in, def in defense of its sovereign territory. It just got bigger, okay? All right. And also, if there's an existential threat, meaning Russia could come to an end, right, right. those are the conditions that they would use it, yes. okay? Use these weapons. Right. And, yep. and, and, and everyone, all of Russia's 6,000 6, warheads and launchers, they're in Russia. Good. They're not, you know, the Americans that have them in, in Italy, they have them in Turkey, they have them in Belgium, right, right. okay? It, it, all of Russia's is in Russia. No, no, and no. So who, who's, who's playing nuclear roulette here? Right, yeah, no, no, yeah, that, that's right. Um, and, you know, one, one has to wonder whether this is something that the uh, you know the United States is somehow envisaging, just as you know, with um, you know with with the COVID thing, they tried it. Hey, how about we lock 
countries down altogether. You know, no one even thought of it you, that you, you can actually do something like that. You know, just lock it down. You know, no, no one can go out. Um, so they, they now think, well, why don't we try it? Why don't, why don't we see what happens? Um, and you know, I think that, that, that's a, a, a real possibility. And this was something that even during the Cold War, you know, admittedly this was confined to the left, but the left did think, well, the United States might indeed think about, well, let's see what happens. You know, let, let's, you know, roll the dice and see what happens. You're going to use, use, you know, just a small nuclear device, not, not a big one, small one, and see whether we can get somewhere with that. I, I, you know, the, the whole idea that Russia would use it and that somehow we need to be afraid because Russia would use it, as you say, it's completely nonsensical because if you were really afraid of this, then you would have pursued different policies. You would have said, hey, look, Let's not even go there. Let's sit down, work something out on Ukraine. Why risk something? You're saying it's a real risk. You're saying this is nuclear Armageddon. Why are you risking nuclear Armageddon for Ukraine? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> on, on top of it, I guess it's two weeks ago, three weeks ago, in one of Putin's speeches, he said, this is not a bluff. That's a quote. That's this right. is not a bluff. Right. And so the Biden people, they're going to call a bluff? This is insanity here. This is th these are conversations that shouldn't happen. Right. And everybody and there was that that was a very uh, um, clear understanding that we should never get to a point where this could happen. Right. Right. And what the pathetic thing is, George, for all of the quote unquote the West has love for Ukraine, this is where it's probably going to happen if it happens at all. Right. But this, this is, is this is the thing that. Totally Nuts. Yeah, no, the, but this is it. You see, if we go back to um, the fall of 2021, um, when uh, Putin was, um, you know, talking about red lines, and uh, and then I think the, that big speech that he delivered, I think, in November 2021, when he went to the Russian foreign ministry and said, we keep talking about red lines and about moving NATO infrastructure in Ukraine, but the West is not listening to us. Uh, you know, that's November. So that's three months before um, February the 24th. Um, and then uh, on February the 24th, when he announced the, the start of the special military operations, he then said, this is an existential matter for us. This is a serious business for us. So why then did the Biden administration, why did NATO decide, oh, great. So let's just start sending in every piece of military hardware we have. Let's start killing Russians. You know, they've just told us this is an existential matter for us. So let's let's do this. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So then you have to think you would deliver. You want this. You've been wanting to do this. And that, therefore, since you wanted to provoke this war, you have to assume you want to provoke some kind of a nuclear exchange. I mean, you know, yes, you say it's nuts, but, you know, these, these people are nuts. I mean, I think destroying gas pipelines is nuts. Yeah, particularly, George, if you're told explicitly, repeatedly, you're facing an existential threat. And I'm going to do everything necessary to survive this. And then you talk, casually talk about nuclear weapons. I mean, everyone, let's be very clear. This has nothing to do with Ukraine. This is about regime change and just breaking up the Russian Federation. These big clownish people, in the, in the Biden administration, who were in the uh, um, Obama administration, think that this is their opportunity to do it, okay? They, and, and they're all in on it, okay? Because they're not going to see this, uh, quote unquote, opportunity again. That's why they're going, they're tripling, quadrupling down on this. It's the, this is their mission. This is, the, this is what drives them. This is what wakes them up in the morning, right. okay? And, and this is... Use the word. We're, we're approaching Armageddon, and it is not um, uh, the Russian side is not bluffing. Yes. Remember, everyone, you know, if um, it, it, the, let's say the Chinese had an interest in 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 in, uh, in Hawaii and saying, you know, um, uh, well, if we go way way back, you know, two thousand years that we actually ruled this here. Right. No, that's the United States. The United States will defend it, its sovereignty and will use all means necessary. Same thing as applies here. Right. Right. Well, that's it. And, and the problem has been is that the United States is under the impression that, uh, or seems to be under the impression that <clears throat> what's happening in, um, 
Ukraine is similar to what the, uh, the Americans were doing uh, in Afghanistan during the 1980s. Oh, well, we'll just provide the Mujahideen with these um, uh, Stinger missiles, you know, and we're just gonna raise the cost uh, to Russia. Well, the, what the Soviet Union did in Afghanistan was a limited military operation. And the Soviet Union did not regard this as an existential matter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they could find, they could be very annoyed about what the Americans were doing, providing these uh, uh, Stinger missiles to the, uh, the Mujahideen, but it, it wasn't an existential matter. Same goes in Vietnam. I mean, if you think of um, what was the, um, the Soviet Union in China, we're giving support to uh, Hanoi, you know, the Viet Cong and so on. But for the Americans also, this wasn't an existential matter. You know, again, very annoying that the, the Russians are doing this for the North Vietnamese. Ukraine's a different matter. And to think that they're just simply going to sit on their hands and tolerate this indefinitely, um, particularly when they already are explicitly saying, we see this as 1941 all over again. 1941 is that that's a big deal. They didn't say Afghanistan is 1941. Um, <clears throat> so what Biden administration is doing is uh, moving forward recklessly dangerously. And for Biden now to talk about, whoa, nuclear Armageddon, well, who the hell brought this about? I mean, just, whoa, 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 we're close to nuclear Armageddon. So for him to just say, well, this is because Putin is issuing these warnings. Well, if Putin is issuing these warnings, why is he issuing these warnings? You know, could, you, could it be because of what you did uh, and what you've been doing now for ever, pretty much ever since you came to power? No, they, they'll, they can never come to that conclusion, never. But one thing that they seem to believe is true, the Russians always back down. Yes. They always back down. So wh why would it be different now? See, they don't understand the history. They don't understand the importance. You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, Afghanistan was a humiliation for both the Soviet Union and the United States. Um, but it wasn't existential. No one's gonna, you know, you, you, you're, you're not, you, you're not going to go to the point where you, you start World War III over Afghanistan or Vietnam. No, they, there was never that was never a possibility. No, no one ever. No, no, no. It's very interesting is that we look back at the transcripts of Johnson talking to his war cabinet, and they didn't really want to mine the harbor because there could be Russian ships there. You know, right. I mean, they were they were careful. All right, right. but they, they in fact did. Bomb, they did. They did bomb Soviet ships in 1972, and they, but they, at that point. Um, you know, the, the Russians had other fish to fry, which is that they were signing these big uh, strategic agreements with the United States and they decided not to not to mess those things up because this was just on the eve of the big Moscow summit in 1972. So they said, okay, well, we'll let it go. Um, but 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 that's that's really the, the point. It was just, you know, they had other things, uh, to, other fish to fry. In the case of um, Ukraine, this is a very big deal. And the Russians keep saying it's a very, you know, you, they, you, they're, like, they're totally blue in the face. I mean, that's like, you know, you just go yeah. through Putin's speeches throughout 2021 and he's warning again and again. And, you know, you know, these are our red lines. You're not but, listening to us. But see, that's why um, I'm obsessed with the, the Nord Stream pipelines, because the consequences of dis, uh, of disabling them, at least temporarily, maybe forever, um, it's going to be felt very soon, George, very soon. And so to justify the misery and the pain that Europeans are going to have to experience now, because they will. I mean, I mean, there could have been negotiating. There probably were negotiations on how to kind of, you know, we're going to take all the, the pipelines off the table. You know, we're going to still support Ukraine and all that. No, no, no. Whoever did it. And I know, you know, we all know who did it. OK. And now. There's, you can't turn back. That is something that is irreversible. And so you have to up it to just say, well, Europe is freezing and the Russians are gonna you know, take out this village with a, with a thermonuclear weapon, which George, the, the Russians haven't even conducted any strategic bombing. Right, right. Okay. No, can, that, that's why, well, that's what, what I'm they... saying is that flirting with, with nuclear weapons is a preamble to justify um, the, the suffering that people are going to feel very, very strongly and very, very soon. Right, well, I think that's it. I think that, well, I, that, you know, it's obviously uh, 
could well be preparing the ground for a false flag attack, which is uh, which has been a danger really um, from the start. Um, and of course, demonizing uh, Russia. Well, what kind of a monster is it who's uh, threatening uh, nuclear weapons? But I do think that there's there, there is this um, desire on the part of the U.S. military establishment to see. Well, what happens if you, I mean, no one's done it. No one has ever fought a nuclear war. I mean, in the United States, it, it uh, dropped the two atom bombs in 1945. But since then, it, it, you know, it has planned for nuclear wars. I mean, you know, that during the 1950s, you had the heyday of the Rand Corporation. They were, you know, planning all these different scenarios for nuclear wars, but nobody ever did it because uh, ultimately, you know, there was the mutually assured destruction and they said, no, no, that's out, out of the question. All this is stupid ideas that you can have a limited nuclear war. Um, but now you have people saying, well, hey, maybe we could do it. You know, maybe, you know, after all, after all it's not going to be us who's going to be, uh, who's going to feel the pain because it's going to be limited. You know, right? you know the, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's going to be limited. <laughs> okay. right. But that, that, that's the way they, they, you know, back then, you know, when they planned all these things, you know, ultimately, you know, common sense prevailed and said, no, we can't start these limited nuclear wars. I'm not sure there's any common sense now. They think, hey, well, maybe we can, maybe we can, and we can win it. Um, so, um, you know, just, I, I do think that there's a kind of an experiment here, just as there was on COVID. Hey, how about we just mandate everyone takes a vaccine? You, you want it, you know, you, you, you know, whether you want it or you don't, you take the vaccine. And if you don't take the vaccine, you're out. You know, you, you're out of a job and whatever. So, and, and you know, we can just lock everyone down. No one would have thought governments would just simply lock countries down. So, you know, there's a, there's a, you have a feeling that people want to experiment with this. Let's see. Yeah, well, let's, it, let's, it, let's, it, let's see what happens. And it, it, who, whoever is contemplating this, and after all, it's just somewhere in Ukraine. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. That, that's the point. It's just somewhere in Ukraine. Hey, you know, who, you know, they'll be suffering. The Americans won't be suffering. I mean, you know, they're, they're, America's a long way behind. That's why I think it's the, the analogy of the Nord Stream. Hey, we're OK. We've got gas. We've got oil. Um, you, you don't have gas. So, um, but, you know, we're, we're still OK. So that's why, you know, it, it's, it's very, very troubling when the United States starts talking in, in this way about nuclear Armageddon, um, because if, if, as I said before, if you're really afraid of it, then, you know, if the, the solution is very simple. You pick up a phone, call Putin and say, Let, let's bring this thing to an end. You know, this should be quite easily uh, solved. But the last thing you want to do is, is do that. Well, it's, it's interesting you say that because we, we've had um, official uh, statements from official, officials uh, in, in here in Russia, and basically saying to the European Union, what 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 are your goals here? What, what what do you expect to have happen here? Because with all this loose talk about nukes and stuff like that, the destruction of the pipelines, we're we're we're, we're getting to a, some kind of vortex here, okay? And um, it, it's very wise on the part of the Russians to say, I mean, what are your intentions here? Because I have you know, Russians have uh, are fanatics about contingencies. They, they do it all of the time. And if there's going to be the use of a battlefield nuke, which is, I hate when they put the adjectives in front of it. It's a nuke, okay? I don't care. Oh, it's limited, it's tactical. Okay. It's all nonsense. That's, that's pulling the wool over your eyes, okay? Right. Because once one is used, it opens the, the gates to hell, right. okay? Because if you use it once, um, let's say like, um, uh, uh, within, let's say, one of the the new, the new uh, Russian republics, that, that that doesn't matter if it's a battlefield or a nuke or anything. That is, it's to be or not to be. Right. Well, that's it, and that's that's where the um, the, the, the the problems arose when um, with 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 the Rand Corporation when they had all these uh, theories and all these scenarios about. Uh, graduated escalation, you know, we'll start with low level and then there'll be always a point at which we'll uh, stop. Um, in the end, it was always um, unlikely to happen because you know, people still subscribe to the mutually assured destruction doctrine, which is, you know, yeah, you start with a limited uh, nuclear exchange, it's not going to stop. You know, you just move on to the next level and then finally to the intercon. It was, it was delusional to think that somehow, well, we can stop at a level below the intercontinental uh, exchange, but nonetheless, that was that was a scenario that was you know 
Henry Kissinger wrote his book, uh, Nuclear Weapons and Foreign Policy. I mean, Kissinger was not original. Like, he was just essentially regurgitating what the Rand Corporation people were thinking, like Herman Kahn and, and Albert Wolfstetter and all those people who were there. Um, but, you know, the common sense that prevailed then, I'm not at all sure it's, uh, it, it's going to prevail this time. Yeah, because it's a democracy versus autocracy. I mean, the framing of all of this here that doesn't allow common sense and rationale to, 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 to come into play. Okay, it, 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 when, when, you, when you're making it, um, uh, when everyone sees everything as existential, you're in the worst possible place because it limits your uh, ability, your imagination. Look, the Cuban Missile Crisis, um, it was very real. And it took diplomacy and some people with iron nerves to make hard decisions. Okay, I don't see. Are, are, are you are you betting the farm on Jake's uh, on Sullivan, George, uh, that, 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 Lincoln, that, uh, Liz Truss? Yeah, no, that, that's right. But that's that's the, really the problem that the new crop of leaders um, think that this is doable. I mean, you you know, remember the people who were t in charge in 1962, they're all people who had served in World War II. So they knew about the, the horrors of war. Um, and, uh, and, and so therefore they, you know, they, they, they took it very, uh, were very cautious. And remember even then, you know, Kennedy was the sort of the dove within the administration because almost everyone around him wanted to launch an invasion of Cuba right away. I mean, he, he kind of took, took a very moderate uh, stance on, on this, you know, well, it's just first we'll step, go by step by step, you know, we'll, you know, we'll have the, uh, the, we'll quarantine the island, we'll talk to Khrushchev and so on. So we don't get into the situation that we're actually going to seize the, the, the Soviet missiles or, or uh, you know, land, you know, seize Soviet ships, you know. So Kennedy actually, was taking a soft stance in, in contrast to many of the people in his administration. And, 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 and everybody, where are the Europeans? Right. Where are the Europeans on this? The president, a senile president of the United States casually is talking about nuclear Ar Armageddon. Where are the Europeans? Right. It's, it's, it's astounding. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, where are the Germans on Nord Stream? Where, the, where are they? Right, no, I, I, it, 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 it is remarkable, you know, when you think, uh, the Germans, remember how hysterical they were back in the 1980s about the prospects of nuclear war. Now the American president's talking about nuclear Armageddon and it barely registers. They just simply say, oh, Putin, Putin, Putin. I mean, that's it. That's, that's, you, well, that's all you need to say, Putin, Putin, it's all Putin's fault. Um, you know, it's like, you're like, well, do you actually realize what is going on? I mean, you know, just repeating Putin isn't gonna solve your problem for you. No. And lack of imagination. This is what this is all about. This is a leadership class that is just unbelievably um, deficit in any kind of rational thinking. Um, it, we, we, this is the most terrifying time we have had since the Cuban Missile Crisis. But you wouldn't notice it from the mainstream media. No, 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 not at all. They just think that they, they can just go on accusing Russia and that somehow gets them off the hook. Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's absolutely right. You know, why isn't there huge public demonstrations everywhere saying, you know, no, you know, as there were in the 1960s against against nuclear weaponry, you know, the, the, the nuclear disarmament? There's nothing of that nature. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we'll ever really understand the relationship that Zelensky has with American officialdom, but. The last few months tell us very clearly that he mimics what he is told. And if he's talking about a preventative strike against Russia, is that an original idea from Mr. Zelensky, or is it something a seed that they're planting to put into the into the public narrative about what is possible? Again, it's this Overton window. He talked about it. Oh, let's talk about what he talked about very casually in in the most loose possible language, yes. and then it's accepted as being normal. Yes. This is not normal talk. And if you're letting this neophyte in, in, in Kiv you know, drive, officially drive your narrative, yeah. you're in a very bad place. Yeah, yeah no, exactly right. And, um, and when Zelensky said this, um, where were the voices anywhere in the Europe or the United States and to say, 
why you know we, we've now um hitched our, our star to his uh wagon or whatever which, however it goes wagon to his star right? metaphors <laughs> no, yeah exactly I, can't, I, can't, I don't remember how it goes but, but this is a person who's talking about a preemptive strike on a nuclear power uh you know one of the biggest nuclear power in the world he's talking about a preemptive this is the guy that we're, we're supporting um, there aren't any voices like that. I mean, that's a, and, and as there weren't when he was at the M Munich Security Conference in uh, February and said that, oh, well, Ukraine is going to develop uh, nuclear weapons. You know, Boris Johnson didn't say, whoa, you know, hold on, you know, we, we, we're not going down that path. No, it's okay. that's okay. I mean, we, that's kind of why, why the Russians say we need to act now because, you know, he said he's going to get nuclear weapons. And the Western powers seem perfectly happy with this. Yeah, it, 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 it's just like this very, they, they think they're in a casual walk through the park because they, all of their, all, uh, every single assumption they have is wrong. They understand history wrong. They understand causality wrong. And again, you know, what we, they, the Russians always back down. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that, you know, that, that's, their, that's their default position. They will scare strange. them. That's right. It's very, very strange, you know, because, I don't remember any um, occasion on which uh, Russia backed down. It, it's 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 bizarre because you know if we think of any of the crises during the Cold War, um, hard to see you know whether, whether the Russia. I mean, I could say they, they backed down on, in, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, but they did no, totally back down. They did not. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, they did not. Exactly, they they got the Jupiter missiles. Um, out of uh, which the so, American public wasn't told about the until American the American public wasn't told. But uh, but for instance, in um, Hungary in 1956, rather Eisenhower had threatened um, you know liberation rollback of Eastern Europe. The Eisenhower administration was promising massive retaliation because they had huge nuclear superiority over the Soviet Union at that time. Um, Soviets didn't, didn't back down at all. They just went straight into Hungary and said to I, you know, to the Americans, okay, go go for it. You know, you want to start a world war, we're ready for it. You know, we're ready for your massive retaliation. So when when did this happen that uh, that they backed down? Whoa, we can't go here because uh, you know, the United States is gonna, you know, retaliate massively against us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and um but they but they allow they they um uh, were forced to accept NATO expansion. Yes, but they were they gave a warning every single time. Right. Right. As Ambassador Burns at the time said, he's 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 written about this. Every every segment of society, uh, pro-communist, anti-communist, uh, uh, if, if they like Yeltsin or they like Putin or dislike both, everyone would say, but NATO is a red line. Okay, I mean that's something we all kind of really, really feel strongly about. Okay. Yeah, you, Ukraine. Yeah, exactly. Ukraine. You, Ukraine is going to be the red line. So <clears throat> the problem is, of course, that all these people, um, when they had a chance to um, uh, stop it in 2008, didn't do it. So you know, it's you know, easy in retrospect to say, well, oh, that probably wasn't a great idea. Yeah, but you know, yeah. <laughs> too right it wasn't a great idea why didn't you do more to stop it you know well, why it, didn't Merkel it, do more to stop it so it, yeah. it's one of these interesting things in, in, in our postmodernist world they, they they tell us not to rely upon our instincts our instincts are are, are um, uh, not sending us the right signals but in, in, in Bucharest the instinct was from the Europeans like I, I now Let's step back from this. Right. This is our instinct, okay? Right. right. And 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 then the, and then it was the Americans, you know. Oh no, we have to keep plowing right. ahead and all that, you know. Oh, uh, any country can join whatever line. You know, all the stupid stuff that the platitudes and all that. Right. But you know, it, 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 Sarkozy and, and and Merkel, their instinct right. kicked in. It's just like this is probably not a good idea. Right. And then they have this halfway half solution. Oh, you know, for future membership, That's which right. did, didn't mollify the Russians one bit. No, I can promise no, you that. No, of course not. Because why should they believe that? Oh, that the oh well, it's sort of being postponed into the indefinite future. Well, how long is it going to be indefinite? You know, not next week. You know, next month maybe. Next year. Sooner or later, they're going to bring it into. You know, there's no question. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. And I think the Russians believe. That it was going to happen sooner the moment the biden administration came to power and i think and i i think all the evidence is that the, that this is what biden 
uh, wanted to so do. You have to remember everyone, whatever, what, what happened right after the Bucharest summit, South Ossetia. Yes. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's, 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 no, they, they had, they were on course. Okay. And they tested it. Okay. And it, it's interesting. They didn't learn from South Ossetia and Abkhazia because it was a red line and they crossed it and Russia reacted. Okay. So why wouldn't you think, did they, 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 the Russians learned from that. That's why they were watching Ukraine very, very carefully. A dereliction of duty on the side of Mo Moscow to let the coup happen in the first place. That's a dereliction of duty. Okay. Right. What? Okay, a halt. Yeah. Okay, a, a, a huge criticism. Right. Okay, yeah. and, and and there's no wonder after the coup, boom, Crimea off the yes. board because they could see yes. exactly how these people operate. Yeah, no, 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 no that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. All, All right, right. Every, this loose talk about nuclear weapons, it has to stop. It has to stop. It, 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 it nothing is going to come good of this. Okay, because once you start normalizing it as part of policy. It's a danger for everyone. And, and, and these people are so irresponsible. It's terrifying that these people actually have power. Yeah, no, I, I, that's right. And I, but I, the unfortunate thing is um, with the Biden administration is that uh, they just normalize the uh, everything, you know, the, and then the, the next, then they move on to the next stage. So I mean, so overall, we're, we're not going to go along with HIMARS, you know, that I think that that's a weapon system. We're not, we're not, we're a little trouble with that. And then they sign off on it. Um, so now they're talking about uh, nuclear weapons, or, but it's as if somehow it's the Russians uh, who want to do it. But of course, if the Russians want to do it, then hey, we need to be ready uh, to respond. And of course, you know, and then you move to the next step. Well, if we're ready to respond, maybe we should do something preemptively. Uh, you know, why, as, as um, Zelensky said, you know, hey, responding, it's too late. You know, that's why you need to do something preemptive. So you kind of, you keep moving the the line uh, ever further and, and so i think that it, this is very dangerous stuff okay and look at who's 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 in charge do i need to say more all right everybody obviously we're going to keep a close watch on this this is peter and uh, george on the gaggle uh, we're on local so please go to the gaggle.locals.com please visit our store and i don't know start drinking until tuesday i don't know exactly start just getting absolutely hammered you know vodka <laughs> gin you know tequila you know whatever whatever's your favorite it's going to be a brutal uh time uh, until tuesday 3 p.m eastern time and then finally you know happy days are here again so uh, that uh, come join me 3 p.m eastern time on the live stream on locals always a lot of fun and on the way out the door think about little buddy um i mean because you know he, chances are he was probably drinking as well over the weekend you know he's parched <laughs> he's parched now, he's probably tequila is probably his his favorite you know given he's from mexico um so think about little buddy you know if you have a few bob in your pocket whip him out dunk him in his um uh tip jar he'll be he'll be very appreciative uh, as would all of us will be uh, the more you'll be able to donate, the more of these videos we can make, the more we can invest in new technology, and the more likely it is we're going to be able to buy um, Buddy yet another bottle of tequila. So remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.